The Rock Island Armory Model 200, let's check it out. Rock Island Armory is known for its 1911s, but they do make a line of 38 revolvers. Um, and this is one of the four inch models. They also make a two inch model, a hammerless and with the hammer, both double action, single action. These revolvers are priced right. There's something about a revolver that is just pleasing. Maybe it's just because it's more of a classic design. Uh, maybe because revolvers are simple. I mean, they're very simple in the way they're made and the way they operate. Uh, or maybe it's just because they're so reliable. 38 Specials and 357 Magnums were really police firearms uh, for decades. And it took a long time for them to really gain confidence in a semi-automatic. Uh, and that's really saying something considering most of your revolvers were, you know, six shot or five shot for the small detective type guns. And then of course you had your uh, semi-automatics which had a lot of round capacity. But there's something about a nice revolver. You know, I really like a good revolver as a truck gun. Maybe if I'm going packing out into the woods, going on a big day hike, I'd really like revolvers just for that reason. And this is the Rock Island Armory Model 200. A while back I did a review on the Model 206, which is a more of a snub nose type a concealable handgun. Uh, this of course has the nickel finish. They do make it in the parkerized finish like the Model 200. Uh, and here you see the hammer has been completely bobbed. But they do make a version of this with a hammer that comes out where you can shoot it single action. The Model 200 is a 38 Special revolver and that's all that Rock Island offers. Just 38 Special. This is not rated for plus P ammunition, but Rock Island Armory says that shooting plus P in here will not hurt the gun and that you could carry it that way, but just not to shoot a lot of plus P ammunition. This is a really uh, inexpensive handgun. Uh, it's made by Rock Island again, and Rock Island, of course, is known for the 1911s, but these revolvers uh, have a, a pretty good following, uh, mainly because of the price. These handguns, I think the retail is like $275. In fact, I found them on Bud's Gun Shop for $238. <laughs> and that was free shipping. So, I mean, that's a, a tremendous deal for a backup handgun. Something you can, you know, you're not afraid. You can go on a fishing trip with it. You can carry it around. It's You don't really mind if it gets beat up and banged up. You know, if you lose it, you're not really out a lot of money. That's one of the reasons why I really like a nice revolver. But let's go ahead and make sure the gun's unloaded. We're going to release the cylinder latch, and of course you can see that it's empty. Uh, this is a six-shot revolver. Uh, it's a all-steel frame, has a nice parkerized finish on it, and it's double single action. And what that means is that if you pull the trigger, this is double action. With the hammer down, I can bring it back, and I can fire the pistol. Uh, if I want a little more accuracy, if I can take my time, I'm going to pull the hammer back, and it's a very crisp, single action. So it's very versatile. And then that's one of the things. Now the, the trigger pull and the trigger action, we're going to look a little bit more at that in just a second. It's a four inch barrel. It has a partial shroud that gives you a little more stability with the barrel. And that also protects your ejector arm. Uh, it's very smooth. And that's one of the things. The operation of this handgun is smooth. Uh, it just locks up. The lockup is nice. There's very little play in the cylinder. Um, it's a somewhat of a Colt design uh, or some features, especially with the cylinder latch right here. You pull back on it to release your cylinder 
and um, and there's some other features. It's, it really fits holsters for your detective specials or your actually your police positives. It does allow for you to kind of have a little bit of aftermarket support, even though there's nothing really made for these. The grip is a what they call a polymer. I mean, it's not really soft like a Packmire, but yet it's not as hard as a rubber grip or a really hard rubber. But it's not a bad grip. Um, I'm not all that excited about the grip. I'd really like to see some aftermarket grips for these. But the only thing that I found that was even close is somewhat like a detective special or something like that, a Colt design in Packmire. But typically it takes some fitting. This is not made exactly the same. And there are a number of differences. The sights are fixed. You have a deep notch in the back. Right up here at the front, you have a ramp and it's all blacked out. Uh, I would probably like to see a little bit of color on the end uh, because it does contrast, especially if you're shooting dark targets. Uh, but, you know, the accuracy is not bad and the sights are not that difficult to pick up. When firing single action, you have serrations on the hammer really easy to grab hold of and to pull back. Now you have a very positive grip here. Um, the latch also has serrations, so when you grab it, you can just pull it back, snaps into place. Trigger is smooth. Here you can see the cylinder rod has a nice little knurling on here to allow you to spin that. And of course, getting the shells out, not too difficult. I mean, you can tell it's very smooth. And that's one of the things a lot of times about inexpensive revolvers is they can be a little gritty, uh, they can be heavy, and there can be a lot of stacking. And that's one of the things i found not only with this one, but also with the 206. The weight of the pistol is 28 ounces, and of course it's all steel. Uh, it's 8.75 inches in total length and 5.44 inches in total height. Here I have a Smith & Wesson Model 10, and you can see they're pretty close to the same size. Now the Smith is a lot thinner in this area, uh, but I think a lot of that has to do with the grip. Uh, this would actually come back a lot more. Uh, but with this grip, it's going to give you a little extra. I had Packmires on this before, and they were really worn out. Uh, so I put these wood grips. I'll probably do something a little different here. This is an older Smith & Wesson. It has one of the exposed firing pins on the hammer. Uh, the Model 200 has the floating firing pin, and that makes it really nice because it has a transfer bar. And that means that if this gun is dropped on the hammer, it's not going to fire. Uh, it, this could fire dropped on a hammer because of the firing pin. So that gives you an added safety feature because there are no other safeties on the gun. The double action trigger pull really is your safety. Uh, the barrel here on the Smith & Wesson, this is one of the bull barrels. It's a little thicker, but to be honest, this Model 200 has a very thick, sturdy barrel a lot better than some of the old Colts that had really pencil thin barrels. The Model 200, the cylinder rotates to the right. Uh, that's like the old Colt revolvers. On the Smith & Wesson, the cylinder rotates to the left. Not that that makes a big difference, but it's just something interesting. <laughs> the grips are two-piece. Just with a flathead screwdriver, you can remove them. Uh, one thing I wanted you to notice is that it does use a standard spring instead of a flat spring that the old Colts used. Uh, and this is more modern in design, more like the Smith & Wesson. One big difference I've noticed with the Model 206 beside the short barrel is that the muzzle is crowned. On the 4-inch model or on the 200, it's not crowned. Um, and that's kind of funny because that really helps with accuracy. It keeps that muzzle from getting dinged. I'd really like to see the muzzle on this 4-inch crowned as well. As far as the action of the trigger pull, double action, it's just really smooth. Uh, that's one of the things that's going to allow for really good accuracy, even though it has a fairly heavy trigger pull. Very smooth. Single action. Very crisp. Again, there is no over travel. There's no play. I mean, it just, you put the right pressure on and it will go. And that's going to allow for pretty decent accuracy. To demonstrate the difference between single action, which is just pulling the hammer back and firing, and double action with the hammer down, pulling the trigger through, I shot two different groups. Uh, we were using the Arms Core 158 grain full metal jacket ball uh, at seven yards. And so we were shooting at easy to see targets. First group was single action. Second group is double action.
Now at single action, we had four shots right in here and then a couple a little bit high, but pretty decent sized little group. Um, here's the Arms Corps 158 grain ammunition. Now here with a double action, we were shooting just a little bit to the right. You can see the groups are a lot more spread out, uh, two and two and two. So, you know, there's a difference between shooting single and double action with your accuracy. Uh, and again, the point of impact even changed from shooting about right in here to right in here. Of course, the more you practice with double action, the tighter these groups are going to be. The gun shot very smooth. The, the uh, trigger pull in single action was real crisp, uh, surprisingly so. And then with the uh, double action, very smooth. Uh, one of the things about single action, double action is when you shoot single action, you're going to get better accuracy because you can pull the hammer back. You don't have that long trigger pull. Uh, with the double action, you've got the pull through and the sights can wobble just a little bit. So typically, if you're really wanting to get accuracy, do the single action and then double action uh, more for fi faster follow-up shots, really. Um, and if you were using this in a self-defense situation, typically you would be shooting it in double action. So it's very important to train in double action. Um, the grip, uh, well, while I'm not really a huge fan of this grip, it's more like it's in between kind of a soft uh, rubber grip and almost a hard plastic. It's kind of like an in-between. Uh, but it has nice finger grooves and it fits in the hand well. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't really have any hot spots. Uh, shooting it with the recoil, uh, it was still very comfortable. But again, I would really like to see some different grips offered for this. With the Colt style cylinder release, uh, it's very positive. You just pull back and it comes right out. Uh, you know, with the Smith & Wesson, you're pushing forward and it brings it out. And then of course with the Ruger, you push the button and it brings it. But I really like the old Colt style. Uh, this pistol again is pretty much based on a lot of the Colt designs, but there's a lot of departures. Uh, with the hammer being serrated on top, real easy to grab hold of. And then, of course, the trigger is smooth, which, you know, if you have a, a little bit of some serrations right there, it makes it a little easier to grip. But because the trigger is very fluid and crisp, uh, this makes it nice. You're not focusing on those serrations. It's very smooth. And as you can see, that cylinder just turns. Seemed to be really, uh, everything was in time. Everything locked up fine. Uh, when I first pulled it out, closing the cylinder, like right here, it would seem to bind a couple of times. Uh, but after shooting it just a couple of times, it stopped. Uh, but it was. It would kind of stop here, and I, I couldn't quite get it. Uh, one great thing is is the uh, the cylinder pin is resting, and it's inside this little housing a little, or a little shroud, which makes that nice, keeps it from being out here. And, of course, that's typically old style, but they did include that. Uh, the barrel is not a pencil barrel. It does remind me a little bit of the Model 10 Smith & Wesson heavy barrel but still a little thinner. Uh, the gun's very clean as far as the markings, uh, just with the uh, model number here and then the Rock Island logo here on the back. So with the parkerized finish, it has a really Spartan look to it, and I like that. The sights are combat sights, so you're not gonna get a lot of pinpoint accuracy, but they definitely line up. You can see the front blade pretty well uh, in the notch in the back. And so I think that you know the accuracy I mean, I was able to hit steel with no problem. And two, they're fixed and they're just solid. Now I was shooting Arm Score 158 grain full metal jacket. It was just the, the round ball. Um, you know, it shot very well. Now when I was hitting the soda, because it didn't have any kind of hollow point, um, you know, it just kind of pretty much went through. And so the carbonation is what actually made it move at all. That's what you're going to get. That's why it's definitely important to have uh, self-defense loads in whatever pistol you're carrying. Uh, but for out here at the range, uh, the ammunition did very well. It smoked a little bit, but not too bad. And usually the Arms Corps ammunition is very reasonable. And of course, with reliability, a revolver, you just pull the trigger and shoot. Uh, if you are having problems, you definitely need to have that checked. But, um, you know, the, the rounds just fed. The cylinder moved very smoothly. Didn't have any issues whatsoever. Uh, the primer strikes were good and solid. 
and um, overall a really good experience. Now, one of the things about a budget pistol, and I'll just tell you up front, is that quality control sometimes can waver. And both of the Rock Island Armory revolvers that I've reviewed have just been good. They've been good solid guns and I've read a lot of good reviews on them but I have read some things that they were having some issues. Uh, maybe with some noise when you're pulling the hammer back and things like that. One of the great things about Rock Island Armory is they do have a lifetime guarantee so you can send that revolver back in if you're having problems and that's really good to know when you have a budget pistol. Rock Island Armory has been in the business for a long time and they make really good solid 1911s. Um, and so I think a lot of that translation goes into the revolver making. Um, the great thing about this is with the price it is, this makes a great entry level revolver. Uh, you can buy this, try it out, and then if you want to move up to something more refined, you can. But you're going to pay about twice the price than you are with this little Rock Island Armory. One thing I do want to mention is uh, the humidity is really up here and putting my glasses on just firing the six rounds. By the time I got to the end, my glasses were pretty much fogged up. So, you know, there was a little bit of hesitation here and there only because my glasses, I couldn't, I just couldn't see. Um, I do have some stuff that I put on them and I, I just left it up at the, at the shop. So now let's talk about pros and cons of the pistol. Uh, as far as pros go, it's a very smooth trigger pull. Uh, everything just functions very well. I had no problems at the range. Uh, very smooth action. Definitely the price is a big plus. Uh, talking about you know under the $250 range, uh, which really makes this a great gun, again, to do a lot of things, truck gun fishing, hiking, whatever you're doing to be able to carry this. And the Park Rise finish is pretty good uh, in outdoor environments. In fact, that's the reason it was designed in World War II for the Navy, is to keep uh, metal parts from corroding. Um, it's a very uh, solid pistol. Uh, the, everything, the cylinder turns freely, the lockup's nice. As far as cons go, uh, one of the big things is the grip. I, the grip's fine, I like the grip, and I would keep it on here. Uh, without too much problem but uh, I'd like to see some aftermarket grips or some different type grips um, that would be nice um, I think that the standard 206 wood grips will fit on the model 200 uh, but then you've got a, a small narrower grip and for this size pistol I'd really rather shoot this gun with the larger grips it gives you a little bit more for felt recoil uh, these are not rated for plus P but According to Rock Island Armory, they don't rate it for plus P because they don't want somebody to shoot a steady diet of plus P in here. They said officially that shooting plus P in here is fine, and if you want to carry plus P, that's fine, but you just don't want to shoot a whole lot. It'll wear any gun out. While the finish is pretty decent on the outside, when you get into the inside, especially at the top right here uh, of the, above the cylinder, there are a few tool marks. There's some a few tool marks right in here uh, in the shroud. Uh, and, you know, all of these are pretty much hidden. Uh, everything else really has a fairly smooth finish to it. One of the things about the 206 is it was a little wavy, and I think that had to do with applying the nickel finish. Uh, but I think the finish on the 200 is actually a little better overall, even though I really like the look <laughs> of this Model 206. But overall, I think it's a really solid revolver for the price, and again, uh, it's very versatile for just being used as a tool. It's going to hold up well. When you pull the trigger, it's going to go bang. The accuracy is fine. Uh, so, you know, it's a really just nice budget gun. And if you're just getting into revolvers, I think this would be a great choice. I want to thank Rock Island Armory for sending the Model 200 and the Arms Corps 38 Special Ammunition. Great combination and a lot of fun to shoot. Now you can go to armscore.com and check out all the specs of the pistol and again the uh, retail price on these is just $275. I've seen it in a number of places for uh, under the $240 range. And so it's just a great buy if you don't have a revolver and you want to check it out. This is a great way to get introduced to this classic and traditional way to shoot firearms. Uh, and one of the things about a revolver is it just works. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
make the model. Uh, but you can find them. In fact, I found them on Guns. Guns um, the now one thing I wanted to dem now I wanted to dem demonstrate using some of the uh, 158 grain and smooth. The double action is not bad. It's smooth, but you definitely get uh, like you want it to. Uh, if you don't, if it if it doesn't. Uh, all the way from an officer size to full size with accessory rails and stuff and all this stuff. Hold still and wait for the flash. <laughs> 